Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Katie and I'm the Organic Esthetician. Today, we're gonna get back to basics. Here on the channel, we talk a lot about anti-aging devices and products, but I think a lot of you still have questions about skincare application. Which product do I put on first? Do I really need to double cleanse? So in today's video, we're gonna take it back to the basics, and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how you should apply your products at home, whatever those products are, and why the products you put on your skin in the morning should be different than the products that you put on your skin at night. If anyone's new to the channel, I've been a licensed esthetician in California since 2010. I focus on clean beauty and anti-aging devices. I love modality, whether it's an at-home gadget or a professional treatment that I use during my facials. Here on the channel, I share tips and tricks on how to use these devices. I break them down explaining what exactly these modalities are doing for your skin to help figure out which device is best for you to achieve your personal skincare goals. So if that interests you, make sure you watch my videos. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanna remind you all that you don't need a 12 step skincare routine. I think four or five products is a really great place to start, especially if you're more of a skincare minimalist. So keep that in mind. I don't wanna push anything on any of you. But here at The Organic Esthetician, we're all about achieving the best possible results. And that means investing in your skincare. Not all ingredients or formulations are created equal. And while not all products warrant their price tags, some actually do. And knowing when to spend money and when to be a little more frugal can be ideal in creating your own personal skincare routine. So I'm gonna walk you through some skincare basics I will suggest products. I'll link all of those products in the show notes down below. I'll also list my Shop My Shelf links, which has a more extensive selection of my personal favorite products at various price points that might be helpful if any of you are on a budget. The last thing I wanna say before we get started, it might be worth your while to clean up the products that you use if you tend to use more drugstore options or if clean beauty is something that you haven't explored yet. And let me tell you why that is. So let's imagine you have this beautiful, expensive moisturizer and it's got ceramides and lipids and antioxidants and maybe even some peptides, we'll call it a luxurious anti-aging moisturizer. Then it also has parabens and it also has synthetic fragrance. And there's even some propylene glycol and maybe some phenols too. I don't know what this moisturizer is, but I definitely don't want it. And let's say you don't care. Give me all the chemicals, I just want products that work. A lot of these more toxic preservative systems, even if you don't care, are known skin irritants. Even though you have these beautiful anti-aging actives in your formulation, these other ingredients are gonna cause some issues in the skin. Possibly they'll disrupt your endocrine system, how your body reacts to and secretes hormones. But more than likely, they're just gonna create some underlying inflammation. And when it comes to aging, inflammation is one of our biggest enemies. Your skin is gonna use all of its energy over here, putting out the fire. And there's not gonna be a lot left over for the fun things like hyaluronic acid or collagen synthesis. Just something to think about. Okay, so we're gonna start with cleansing your face. In the morning, you don't need a deep cleanse. In a dream world, you've done a nice deep double cleanse at night, you've gone to sleep on clean sheets, maybe even a silk pillowcase, and now in the morning you just need a light refresh, something creamy, hydrating, or maybe something light like a micellar water. I love using a micellar because it's like a cleanser, toner, all in one. You wipe it on and you leave it on. You don't have to rinse your face. My favorite is from Fortuna Skin and it's finally back in stock. If you have more dry, mature skin and you want a traditional cleanser, opt for something gentle and creamy like Lacerne's Lessentials Cleansing Creme. If you have normal to oily skin, opt for a hydrating, non-stripping, water-based cleanser. One of my favorites is Lacerne's Lessentials Cleansing Gel A. I use Lacerne in my practice. It's what I retail. So I'm gonna be suggesting a lot of Lacerne products. But again, check out that shop my shelf in case you're looking for something at a different price point. Some people like to splash their face with water in the morning. And while I get the allure of doing such a thing, it is going to disrupt the pH of your skin. This is important because your skin's pH needs to be 
be balanced for optimal penetration of all those expensive products you're about to put on next. This is where using a toner or an essence is really important. If you are a face splasher in the morning, make sure you do not skip using a toner before you use your serums or moisturizers. All right, facial essence. This next step is your essence or hydrating toner. A lot of people skip this step and it is the easiest way to instantly improve the efficacy of everything else you're putting on, your skin hydration, and a great way to use less product. All you need to do is look for something hydrating. I personally love the Lessentials Essence. This is my favorite toner I have ever used ever. And that's because it has this ingredient called Saccharomyces lysate extract. This is the same active that I use in the nebulizer during my oxygen infusions. And what this ingredient does is help support cellular respiration. That's oxygenation at a cellular level, something integral to healthy cellular function. So not only does it have hydrators and antioxidants, it also has this active that is going to help support your skin on a deeper level, which is what we always want. If we're healthy on the inside, we'll be healthy on the outside. Another product I really like is Josh Rose Brooks Hydrating Accelerator. This is a really nice hydrating toner. It also smells delicious. So when you're applying your toner, you can mist it directly onto your face or my preferred application is to mist into your hand and then press it into your skin. This way you're pushing in product. When it comes to a hydrating toner or essence, you don't want to apply it with a cotton round as that sweeping motion is more about lifting as opposed to pushing. And we wanna push in hydration. If you're feeling especially parched, you can perform what is called the seven skin method, which is a Korean technique of simply applying your toner or essence up to seven times in a row. So that might sound crazy, but it works so well. Imagine taking a dry sponge to wick up a spill on the counter. Weirdly not as absorbent as a wet sponge. Your skin is the same way. By pressing in layer after layer, so mist into your hand, press into your skin. Mist into your hand, press into your skin. Do this up to seven times and you can watch your skin plump up and rehydrate in front of your eyes. I find this is especially great situationally. Maybe it's during the winter, you need a little extra hydration. Maybe you just got off of an airplane. Maybe you fell asleep in the sauna. Maybe you had one too many glasses of wine last night. Adding a little extra hydration through your essence is a really great way to bring up your internal hydration level and allow the products you put on next to be more effective and for you to use less of them. The next step would be a water-based serum. So when you're applying your products, you're applying them in order of weight or viscosity. So we cleanse our skin foundation. We're going to add essence or toner, water, and now we're going to do water-based serums. If you have a creamier, thicker serum, make sure you apply that after your lighter, thinner serums. Does that make sense? Thinnest to thickest. That is our order of application. Now, whatever serum you might have, or maybe you're skipping this step and you don't have a serum, we'll loop back to those people in just a second. When you're applying your serum, if you haven't used your essence, it often gets stuck where you first apply it and you don't get really nice spreadability and glide over the skin. In these situations where the skin is dry, when you apply your serum, you're going to have to use more product to get it everywhere that you need to go. Now keep in mind, as I'm doing these fake skincare applications, I'm also covering my neck and chest. Do not forget these areas you're gonna be spending a lot of time later in life correcting this zone right here, just like I am now, if you forget to put your skincare here. So don't skip the neck and deck. A serum is a targeted treatment. These are products that have a higher concentration of actives and they're a great way to address whatever your specific skin concern is. So maybe you have pigmentation, so you want a brightening serum, or maybe you have fine lines and wrinkles and you want an anti-wrinkle serum. These are all great ways of picking a serum. When it comes to serum application, when you're choosing to apply this serum over 
over that serum, morning or night. This is where your skin's circadian rhythm comes into play. Okay, so maybe you've heard about circadian rhythms, maybe you don't really know what that means, but it's your body's internal clock. And all these different systems and processes in your body all have their own clocks. It's pretty wild. Your skin has its own clock. During the day, your skin is on defense. It's all about protection. It's when your skin produces melanin, which is pigment to help protect it from extended UV exposure. Your skin is less permeable during the day. It's preventing all those little funky contaminants that are out there in the world, so many of them, from getting in and wreaking havoc inside your body. This is why I like using serums that support the skin's circadian rhythm. At night, your skin does something completely different. And a little bit later, we're gonna get to our PM routine and we'll talk about the skin's circadian rhythm and what serums are best for night. So when it comes to your daytime serums, I like using something that is going to support the skin's biological daytime function. So that category would be antioxidant serums. Any sort of antioxidant is gonna be great for daytime use because we're gonna help support the skin's protective barrier. That being said, I love a vitamin C serum for the day. Two of my favorites are the C Fusion from Skin Modern. Skin Modern's a little more cost-effective. I like their serums because they all use a base of three different forms of hyaluronic acid. So they're almost like a hydrating serum and a targeted serum in one. This serum uses 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, which is one of the newest forms of vitamin C. Super high tech and very stable. Doesn't cause any sensitivity on the skin. That's paired with niacinamide, glutathione, and other forms of vitamin C, aminopropyl ascorbyl phosphate. My other favorite vitamin C is Lucerne Serum Absolute V15. So this is a fermented form of C. It's 15% L-ascorbic acid, the most potent form of vitamin C, and it's fermented. When you ferment ingredients, it enhances the nutrient density of those ingredients and the ingredients paired with it. So it's intensifying those actives. It also breaks them down into tiny bite-sized molecules that absorb better and faster into the skin. Vitamin C is a super anti-aging ingredient and it does a little bit of everything. It's an antioxidant that gives environmental and UV protection that helps fight free radical damage, those reactive oxygen species in the skin. It's great for treating breakouts and acne and it triggers and enhances collagen production. My favorite combo is using a topical vitamin C along with an internal liposomal vitamin C supplement. My favorite liposomal C is from Symbiotica. You can just squeeze the packet directly into your mouth and it's totally delicious. Lipospheric C I used to take is nowhere near as tasty, but both are really great options. Taking liposomally encapsulated supplements is a great way to ensure efficacy and proper absorption of your supplements instead of spending a bunch of money on supplements and having them pass right through you. Now again, choose a serum that's best suited for your skin. I personally just like to support the skin's biological functions with my serum application. I find that it enhances both the absorption and the results. After your serum, you can move straight to your moisturizer or optionally, you could apply a few drops of a facial oil. So I love applying a few drops of a facial oil underneath my moisturizer, both day and night. I know some people like to pop a little bit of oil over the top of their moisturizer and I find that application better suited for night. During the day, I want that oil to absorb into the skin, adding antioxidants and lipids and then I'm going to seal it in with the ceramides that are in my moisturizer. My favorite facial oil of the moment is Le Prunier's Plum Beauty Oil. It's 100% cold-pressed organic plum oil. The plum kernel has a natural marzipan scent, so it smells almost like almond cookies no synthetic fragrance. That's just what plum oil smells like. It's antioxidant, 
It's rich in vitamins A and E. It has polyphenols that are protective. It's nourishing while also being lightweight, absorbs instantly, and is non-comedogenic. I have a blog post that I made a million years ago, but it talks about the different essential fatty acids that are in oils and which ones are best suited for what skin types, along with their comedogenic rating. I'm gonna put that blog post link down below so that you can find an oil that's best suited for your skin. Another product that I've been using lately that I have been so impressed with is the Living Libations Best Skin Ever Sea Buckthorn Oil. So sea buckthorn is this berry. I believe it's native to Scandinavia and it's packed with vitamin C. And this facial oil is kind of like your one-stop shop for my skincare minimalists. So if you wanted one product to be your cleanser and your moisturizer, this is the oil that I would suggest. They retail it in various sizes. They also enhance it with specific essential oils. And I really have loved the results that I've gotten with it. So I'll loop back to the Living Libations oil during our oil cleanse and our nighttime routine a little bit later. After the optional facial oil is your moisturizer. So you can go straight into moisturizer application after your serum or even after your toner and essence if serums are not for you or not in your budget. Daytime is all about protection and antioxidants. So using an antioxidant moisturizer is going to be a great way of supporting the skin. I love Lucerne Labs Force to V Creme Lux. This is something you could use day or night. It has a very luxurious feel. It's lightweight, but incredibly moisturizing. It has vitamin C, CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid. It's all about supporting the skin. It also has that Saccharomyces lysate extract that the essence has, helping support that cellular function of the skin. Also love Josh Rosebrook's Nutrient Day Cream. Again, antioxidant rich, medium weight. The Nutrient Day Cream has SPF in it. I would still recommend putting SPF over the top, but that is just me. Um, we're gonna get to SPF in a second. Another option is for someone who is normal to oily, you could just use your facial oil as your daily moisturizer. That might freak some of you oily skin folks out, but like treats like. So as long as you're using a non-comedogenic facial oil, so you're not using coconut oil, you're not using green tea seed oil, you're using something kind of mid to light weight, argon, plum, jojoba, squalane, something with a smaller molecular size that's not going to clog the pore could be a really great option for you because it'll help balance out the skin's natural oil production. All right, lastly, and maybe most importantly, during the day, you are always going to wear SPF. Whether you're not leaving the house, whether it's raining, put on sunscreen. UV damage and sun exposure is the leading cause of extrinsic aging. That means aging that happens due to external factors, not things that are going on inside the body. Your daily SPF should be either non-nano zinc or titanium dioxide. Now, when it comes to sunscreen SPFs, SPF 50, or SPF 100 is not exponentially higher than SPF 30. It is only a minuscule amount higher. Almost every SPF higher than SPF 30 is a chemical SPF, which means that the active ingredient in your sunscreen is a known skin irritant and an endocrine disruptor. Endocrine disruptors are ingredients that accumulate in the body and change how your body secretes and reacts to hormone production. Hormones are who you are. They tell you when to eat, sleep, procreate. Hormones are incredibly important. And if some sort of external factor is starting to change the way your body makes hormones or responds to hormone production, it can be incredibly detrimental. Additionally, some of these chemical SPFs are known carcinogens, changing your body's DNA and how it reacts to sunlight. So not to freak anyone out, but if any of that made you think, huh, I should use a natural SPF. All you have to do is look at the active ingredients on your sunscreen bottle, and if it's something other than non-nano zinc or titanium dioxide, then it's a chemical SPF. All right, your nighttime skincare routine. So we're gonna follow the exact same sequence that we did during the day. 
cleanse, tone, serum, moisture. We're gonna skip our SPF because you don't need that at night. We're gonna use specific serums to help support the nighttime circadian rhythm. And we are gonna start with a double cleanse. So double cleansing is just the most effective way to cleanse your skin. Cleansing is the foundation of your entire skincare routine, especially at night. If you're gonna only wash your face once a day, make sure it's your nighttime cleanse. This is really important. If you don't wash your face before you go to bed, it's gonna interfere with all of the things that happen at night. So let's talk about the skin's circadian rhythm at night. So during the day it was on defense, at night it lets its guard down, which means that your skin is more permeable. All those expensive anti-aging serums and moisturizers are going to penetrate deeper and be more effective when you apply them at night. While you sleep, your internal temperature rises, which leads to perspiration, which leads to dehydration, which is why using something thicker and a little richer and maybe a little more occlusive even in the evenings is going to help prevent dehydration and help you wake up with plump dewy, beautiful skin. And lastly, while you sleep, your cells regenerate. Cellular regeneration only happens during the rest and digest phase. The parasympathetic nervous system kicks in. This is one of the reasons why being overly stressed is so bad for you and affects the way you look and how you age. If you have not cleansed your skin at night, then you have all of this gunk sitting on the surface that's collected from your day out in the world. So you have accumulation of dead skin, of dirt, debris, of microorganisms, pathogens, viruses, all sitting on the surface of your skin. Just wash your face. Use an oil cleanser first to lift all that gunk up and off. Use a water-based cleanser after to actually cleanse your skin. I mentioned that Living Libations Oil, the best skin ever. You can use a little bit of that oil on some damp cotton rounds and wipe off everything, almost like a makeup remover, but that oil is gonna really effectively lift everything off. Another option is Lucerne's Essentials Emulsion 6. So this uses this nourishing and detoxifying blend of six different oils that can be used as a cleanser, as a nourishing face mask, or even a tiny little bit applied as a moisturizer or facial oil. So really multifunctional. Emulsion 6 feels so luxurious on your skin. All oil cleansers, you're going to apply them to dry skin, work them in, and then use a damp washcloth or damp cotton rounds to remove it. Now that you've gotten off all that gunk, your second cleanse should be with a gentle water-based cleanser. My favorite gel cleanser is Lucerne's Lessentials Cleansing Gel A because it doesn't strip the skin. It uses coconut-derived surfactants instead of sodium lauryl sulfate. SLS strips your skin of all of its natural oil. Sodium lauryl sulfate originally was used in manufacturing to to wick up oil spills. And then someone thought it was a great idea. Put that in skincare and hair care and all the personal products, even in your toothpaste. SLS is what gives cleansers that sudsy foaming activity. It's incredibly stripping and detrimental to the skin's lipid barrier. When you strip the skin's lipid barrier, hydration evaporates out little microparticles sneak in, they wreak havoc, and eventually cause inflammation. Inflammation left untreated turns into skin conditions like dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, and acne. So after you're done cleansing, you're gonna rebalance your pH and add hydration with your hydrating toner or essence. And then if you choose to use a serum at night, again, you can choose something targeted to address your specific concerns. I personally like to use my anti-aging serums in the evening when they are going to penetrate deeper and be more effective. Using growth factors or signaling peptides at night are going to help support that cellular regeneration that's going on. Alternatively, if you have pigmentation and you want something brightening, using a brightening serum that has some more photosensitizing actives could be a good option to use here. Because those ingredients react in sunlight, you'll be better off if you use them at night. From there, optionally, you could put a few drops of facial oil of your choice and then your nighttime moisturizer. I think that as you get older, you're gonna really want an eye cream. And if you haven't used an eye cream in your 20s and 30s, and suddenly you have wrinkles under your eyes or texture or bags, you'll probably think, oh, 
I really wish I used an eye cream before now. So it's a good thing to get in the hang of using. Even just that gentle application under the eye is gonna help move lymph. And stagnant lymph that pulls under the eye is what causes a lot of puffiness and bags under the eye. Obviously, there are a lot of eye creams out there. I love Fortuna Skin's option. It's super creamy and hydrating. Lucerne Labs Eye Contour Creme is slightly thicker, has eye-specific peptides and caffeine to help kind of firm. And additionally, it has some of that vitamin C to brighten as well. I like something a little more lightweight for during the day and something a little richer in the evenings. Apply your eye cream before you put on your moisturizer to ensure that it's creating that protective barrier around the eye and for proper absorption. I was sent an eye cream recently that was really nice that had Bacuchiol in it, which is a plant alternative to retinol. I also really love the eye cream from Lil Fox. I've been trying out some of their products and I love this brand. They have this moisturizer called Succulent Pudding. I used it post BBL and I found it really hydrating and calming. I was using it when I was breaking out previously and it actually helped kind of calm down some of the breakouts. I also use their flower goo, almost like a, an essence and a hydrating serum in one. Really lightweight, really beautiful. I like their products a lot. Not that I need to carry another skincare line, but might be reaching out to them soon. So this would be the time to talk about retinol. Retinol needs its own video, but be my guest if you wanna use some form of vitamin A or an alternative to vitamin A at night. The thing about retinol is that it's not an exfoliant, it's a cellular stimulator. So as we age, the time in which it takes for new skin cells to be produced lengthens, right? Usually it's one day for every year old you are. So my skin cycle would be 37 days long. That's the time my skin takes to produce a brand new cell. And as an adult, a normal skin cycle would be about 30 days. So by adding retinol in, it's quickening the process of creating a new cell. In creating new cells, you push up old cells to the surface. So that creates an accumulation of dead skin cells on the surface of the skin. And this is why people feel dry and flaky when they're using retinol regularly. A great way to combat that is to make sure you're exfoliating properly. You can also cycle your vitamin A. Kids on the street call it skin cycling. Ultimately, you're just easing into your A usage. You don't use it every night. You use it maybe one to three nights in a row. You take a night off, use something else. So with Lucerne, I would use their new We Retinol Creme, which uses a retinol complex. It's Retinol Plus Bacuchiol. I use that a few nights in a row. I take a night off. I use their Hydra Enzyme Mask, which is like a facial while you sleep. You replace your nighttime moisturizer with the Hydra Enzyme Mask. It has pumpkin enzyme that acts like Pac-Man, eating up that dead skin on the surface on squalene to hydrate and nourish the skin so you get hydration and a little bit of exfoliation. I'll do that one night and then I'll do a night with my daytime moisturizer, my Force de Vie Creme Luxe. And then I cycle that three nights with the retinol creme, one night with the Hydra Enzyme, one night with Force de Vie Creme Luxe. So you can add in any moisturizer of your choice. Maybe you have a TREP prescription from your doctor. Use that a few nights in a row, take a few nights off. If you're using a prescription retinol cream that doesn't feel moisturizing enough to you, simply apply your retinol and then use something a little more nourishing over the top of it. Whether it's a retinol cream or your nightly moisturizer, you can always pop a little something over the top to lock in hydration. My favorite thing to use for this is the replenishing balm from Fortuna Skin. It's a blue tansy based balm that heals and nourishes the skin and can be used anywhere on the body. A tiny little bit goes a really long way and I just take a little bit of this, I melt it in my hands and then I pop it over the top of my nighttime moisturizer. Lastly, I love using a lip treatment at night. I love Lucerne's Lucentials lip treatment but I find that I like that more for daytime because it's a little thinner, almost has the consistency of a gloss. So think of it as your like nourishing anti-aging lip gloss. Love it. But for nighttime, my all-time favorite lip product ever is Fit Glow Beauty's nighttime lip treatment. It goes on almost like a thicker gloss, but it has staying power. If you are someone who is prone to chap lips, I highly recommend mouth taping at night. That might sound crazy to you. There's a book, I'm gonna link it down below. There's all kinds of scientific research supporting why breathing through your nose as opposed to breathing through your mouth 
is so much better to your overall well-being and health. But you lose something like 46% of internal hydration at night through your mouth if you sleep with your mouth open. The second you start mouth taping is the day that your lips will no longer be chapped. You sleep better, you don't snore, and you are more hydrated. Externally through your lips, but also internally. And you're not waking up to have that glass of water multiple times, which leads you to go into the bathroom multiple times because you don't need any of it when your mouth is closed all night. Okay, I thought this was gonna be a quick video and it turned into a beast, so. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. Hopefully you found some little helpful tidbits in there. Again, I'm gonna link all of the products I talked about in the show notes down below. And I will also put my shop, my shelf link so you have access to an extended selection of products that I like. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you subscribe. Fun news this week, Trina and I are going to a Zip Beauty event in LA. I'm so excited I get to meet Melanie. I'm not gonna fangirl, but maybe I will just a little bit. I'll be posting over my Instagram stories from the event. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you follow me over there too. My website and my IG links are always down below. All right, everybody, hang in there and I'll see you really soon. Bye.